Uh, I qualified in 1984, so I've been an oncologist as a consultant for 20 years. Now. Okay. In that time, can you, can you just explain uh, or describe the state of the disease of cancer? M hundreds of millions of dollars of research goes into it. What might be different now in terms of, of treatment, uh, survivability, than maybe when you started? What are some of the things that you've seen? Uh, I enjoy my job as an oncologist. I have to say, people say I was a bit depressing. Well, it, it's, actually, it's actually not. I mean, when I became a consultant um, nearly 20 years ago, uh, the, the average woman with breast cancer would have about a 54% chance of surviving or living 10 years. Now there's an 87% chance of surviving 10 years. Or, or We never use the word cure, but, mm -hmm. but more or less the same. Um, so that's, you know, that's a great advance, advancement over the years. And there's lots of things which have contributed to that, of course. There's the earlier diagnosis with screening. There's the radiology of being able to pick up tumours within the breast clearer and earlier. Uh, there's pathologists. The knowledges have got, got better. Surgical techniques have uh, well, largely improved by they're, they're doing less ag aggressive surgery for the same benefit. Um, chemotherapy has has improved you know every time there's a trial published it shows this drug is slightly better than the last one uh, and of course there's the biological agent such as Herceptin which has been a, a major benefit for, for women with HER2 positive breast cancer so all those all those things added up uh, lead to uh, a significant advance what we haven't uh, we haven't looked at is what we're discussing today is, is can you then further benefit you know, through putting people into a, a, a formal exercise program? Can you get them to lose weight? Can you eat more polyphenols? Maybe take a polyphenol supplement or, or, or such like, or look at their micronutrient levels to see if they're deficient in something and then correct them. I still think there's another sort of 10, 15% on top of that, which is largely being ignored because it's not commercially viable. Uh, but nevertheless, you have to look at the advances in traditional medicine and say, well, you know, hats off, there's been a, there's been a good development. But there's more, there's more to come. Can you talk about that a little more? And at least in the United States, um, a lot of that's hard to find. You have to go to other countries to find some al alternative therapies, uh, Mexico, Europe. Um, have you seen any alternative therapies that show some promise, That, like you mentioned, like the Pomati, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, I think... I th I think that what's, what happens is with alternative medicine is, is you get one or two patients who spoil it for the, for the rest of us because they go off and, and take some you know, South American herb when they've got advanced breast cancer and then the breast cancer spreads and, and, and everyone sort of points blame at it. But most sensible people who, who adopt uh, self-help strategies or, or complementary therapies will say it's certainly working with traditional treatments, not, not, not against them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, in terms of lifestyles, as we've already, already said, it's weight reduction, exercise, stop smoking were the big three. But things like vitamin D levels, we're not allowed in the UK as doctors to, to measure vitamin D. It's not funded by the government, unless you're worried about a specific deficiency. Um, and there's been a few trials which showed a sort of equivocal be benefit. But we know that if you're vitamin D deficient, you have a much increased risk of cancer. We know if you have a melanoma, for example, and you stay in the sun, you have a lower risk of relapse, not a higher risk. You know, because all the doctors say, you go, you've got to avoid the sun. Well, no, the damage has already been done by that stage. You've got to go into the sun and keep, put your vitamin D levels up. So th these sort of studies, I think, are, are going to be very helpful uh, so nutritional, vitamins, um, heavy metals, and, and more recently, you know, the polyphenol levels. Um, and so that, that's, that's where I'm coming from, is to, try, is to actually do a blood test on everyone, uh, as well as a lifestyle questionnaire, and try and measure um, insufficiencies and correct them. And I believe that will, you know, that will lead to extra cures.